We shape our buildings, and afterwards our buildings shape us. This quote from Winston Churchill highlights the way in which our physical environment shape our behavior. Similarly, the way we shape technology shapes us. Technology is an integral part of our lives, rapidly advancing in ways that shape who we are as individuals and as a society. This quote is especially relevant when discussing the metaverse. The metaverse is an immersive platform enabling new dimensions of reality accessible through virtual environments. It will revolutionize industries such as manufacturing, education, healthcare, and government. But at the same time, it raises questions on its impact on societal norms, sustainability, and ethical use of the metaverse. We'll be faced with new challenges, including scale, data integrity, privacy, security, and difficulty replicating the complexity and unpredictability of the real world. Welcome to the metaverse from edge to cloud, where we'll be discussing the challenges and importance of open communities to create the metaverse in a way that will benefit all. I'm Tom from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I work in the Advanced Development Group where I focus on cloud native infrastructures, especially how they support open platforms such as the metaverse. I also represent HPE and open communities such as the CNCF, among others. My collaborators, Marcus, Yaron, and I have put together this session to explore the metaverse's potential and to revolutionize the way we interact with technology, our jobs, ourselves. We'll be discussing the challenges faced in the journey towards the metaverse, and thoughts on how and why open communities are critical to achieve the ultimate value that the metaverse can deliver. The term metaverse was coined by science fiction author Neil Stevenson in his 1992 novel Snow Crash, referring to a virtual reality where users can interact with each other and in artificial intelligence in a shared digital space. The metaverse concept has gained increased attention in recent years as the advances in technology have made it possible to create more immersive and realistic virtual environments. If you look at the references and many discussions on the metaverse in social media and the internet, conventional wisdom says the metaverse is a 3D virtual reality space shared by multiple users and accessed through the internet. It's made up of a collection of virtual shared spaces created by the convergence of virtually enriched physical reality and physically persistent virtual reality. Sort of a digital parallel universe where users can interact with each other and digital objects in a highly immersive and realistic way. Now, this can include virtual environments such as video games, virtual worlds, as well as social media platforms and other digital spaces, like the ability to participate in activities that may be impossible in a physical world. But is that it? Or is the metaverse as a concept far more extensible than the next generation social media or gaming platform? For us, we think the answer is yes. We think about the metaverse as a platform rather than an end solution. We think the metaverse is far more extensible and has significant challenges that no comp one company can, can resolve. The metaverse enables a digital ecosystem and has a potential to revolutionize the way we interact with technology and with each other, offering a wide range of societal benefits that, such as economic growth and job creation, improved access to education and healthcare, and increased connectivity and community building. By digitizing the physical world, the metaverse has enormous potential to revolutionize various industries, such as manufacturing, healthcare, medical research, and education. So let's give an example in manufacturing. Metaverse can provide a virtual environment for testing and prototype products, reducing costs, improving safety, and creating greater efficiencies and higher quality. In healthcare, the metaverse can facilitate remote consultations, training of medical professionals, and simulation of complex medical procedures. In medical research, the metaverse can be used to create virtual models of the human anatomy and physiology, allowing researchers to study and test medical hypotheses in a controlled virtual environment. This can help accelerate medical research and drug development 
as well as improve the accuracy of medical diagnosis. And in education, the metaverse can provide immersive and interactive learning experiences that can improve engagement and retention. But as I said, it's not without risks and challenges. So one of the primary challenges is ensuring the accuracy and integrity of the digital data generated from physical objects. This requires the collection and analysis of vast amounts of data, which can be difficult to obtain and process. Additionally, the complexity of the real world situations can be challenging to replicate in virtual environments, which can affect the accuracy of simulations. Metaverse also presents challenges related to privacy, security, ethical concerns, social norms, values, and potential disruption of traditional industries. For example, the immersive nature of Metaverse means that personal data and information may be more vulnerable to unauthorized access or misuse. Additionally, the growth of virtual communities may challenge traditional concepts of physical space and community, which could impact industries like tourism, entertainment, retail. But the metaverse isn't a single technology. It's an integration of several existing and emerging technologies that are sometimes used as independent solutions. To address these challenges, it's essential to take an open, comprehensive, and collaborative approach. This includes investing in research and development to advance the technology, establishing regulatory frameworks to address privacy and security concerns, and promoting ethical and responsible use of the metaverse. More importantly, the open model used by open communities such as the Linux Foundation is required to provide governance, mitigate risks, and meet the challenges faced to achieve the positive outcomes that the metaverse can bring. By taking that open, comprehensive, collaborative approach, we can unlock the full potential of the metaverse and create a more immersive and connected world. So let's take a look at some of the technologies that power the, the metaverse. The first one, which is the one that's most spoke, spoken about, virtual reality and augmented reality. So in the metaverse, VR and AR technologies enable users to immerse themselves in the digital environment and interact with it using a range of sensory inputs, such as sight, sound, and touch. VR allows the users to fully immerse themselves in the digital environment, while AR adds virtual elements to the real world. Blockchain technologies enable secure transactions and establishes digital asset ownership and decentralization. Blockchain has the potential to enable a more secure, transparent, and decentralized metaverse, to enable users to have greater control over their virtual experiences and virtual assets. Generative AI technique is a technique using machine learning algorithms to produce new data that's derived from data that has been used for its training. It allows for the automatic creation of new content, such as images, text, and music without explicit programming. Generative artificial intelligence can be used to create more realistic and intelligent virtual characters and environments and enable more advanced interactions or interactions between users and digital objects. 5G networks provide faster and lower latency data transfer speeds and greater network capacity, which would en enhance the virtual reality experiences. These benefits can create a more seamless, real-time immersive and engaging metaverse experience for the users. And last is spatial computing. Spatial computing enables the creation of digital objects that are aware of their physical surroundings, which can enhance the immersive, interactive, and personalized virtual experiences, blurring the lines between the physical and virtual world. So the metaverse is a complex technical environment that requires a wide range of capabilities in order to support its many different use cases. In many ways, the metaverse is the catalyst for enabling viral innovation in advancing cloud native architectures. So let's take a look at some of the key technical requirements the developers will need to consider when building the metaverse. Scalability. 
one of the most important technical requirements of the metaverse is scalability. The metaverse will need to be able to support millions of users simultaneously, and this will require a highly scalable infrastructure that could handle the massive amounts of, debt, of traffic. Developers will need to, the ability to scale up or down their applications as needed in order to ensure that the metaverse remains stable and reliable, even under heavy usage. Cloud-native architectures, such as using microservices, allow applications to be broken down into smaller, independently deployable services. This means that each service can be scaled independently, allowing developers to easily add or remove resources where necessary as required to handle the changes in demand. In addition, cloud providers can offer auto-scaling capabilities that can automatically adjust the resources based on traffic and utilization for CPU, memory, et cetera. And that would ensure that the metaverse can handle even the largest user loads. Elasticity. In addition to the scalability, metaverse also needs to be highly elastic, meaning that it can be adjust itself, adjust its resources in real time in responding to changes in demand from the users. This is going to require developers to use technologies such as container orchestration, auto scaling, which will automatically adjust the number of containers and serve on a ser or servers running applications and responses, in response to a changes in demand. Cloud native architectures fit this perfectly. So cloud native architectures enable elasticity by providing automated provisioning and deprovisioning of resources. For example, container orchestration platforms like Kubernetes can automatically spin up new containers when demand increases, shut them down when demand decreases. This will allow the metaverse to efficiently allocate resources, saving costs, and ensuring that the application is always responsive and available. Another key factor is data orchestration and synchronization. And as I said, metaverse generates lots and lots of traffic. So, it really requires a sophisticated data orchestration and synchronization capabilities to ensure that different users and applications can interact seamlessly with each other. Remember that users are not geolocation dependent. They could be all over the world, so that data basically needs to move with the, with the users as, as they interact with other people. This requires to use technologies such as distributed databases, messaging systems, and event-driven architectures that can ensure the data is always up to date, accessible to all users in real time. Cloud-native architectures support data orchestration and synchronization by providing these data, distributed data stores and messaging systems so we are able to actually ensure data consistency across different services, users, and locations. For example, cloud providers offer services that can be used for messaging, um, like NATs in the CNCF, event-driven architectures, and distributed data, data stores as well, like, for instance, Apache Cassandra, to provide high availability and consistency across multiple regions. Metaverse has to also be adaptable. So, it's always going to be a consistently evolving environment, sometimes over long periods of time, sometimes actually in real time. New features, new applications, bug fixes, uh, new capabilities, new use cases will be added at any given time. Cloud computing is extremely well suited to this dynamic environment, allowing developers to add, easily add new features and services to the application without disrupting the overall system, meaning that the metaverse can continue to evolve, grow over time, without requiring major overhauls or disruptions to the underlying infrastructure. One of the key benefits of cloud-native computing is, that, is having those developers create those applications that are highly mod modular and loosely coupled, as we mentioned before, with microservices. So different components of the application can be updated. They can be scaled up, scaled down. Uh, they can be orchestrated, moved from one place to another, whether it's because of service changes or because a user moves from one location to another physical location and, and you wanna move data or 
or the, the user over to a uh, highly performant environment. When a new protocol is introduced in the metaverse, developers can create a new microservice implementing that protocol and easily integrate it in the existing infrastructure. Cloud native architectures are designed to be highly automated and self-managing, meaning that they can automatically respond to changes in demand, adjust resources, ensure high availability and high performance. So for example, if there's a sudden influx of users cause a spike in traffic to the metaverse, cloud native architectures could automatically scale resources to handle the load or begin a, a, a process of orchestration to balance amongst different servers without any manual in intervention. I've used the term called infrastructure plasticity, which really enables the developers to experiment and innovate with new technologies and approaches. This is critical for the metaverse, since it's still in the early stages of development. There are many unknowns about how it will be evolving and what technology will be required to support it. Infrastructure plasticity is that it's highly customable, customizable and personalized experience for the user. Users think they're seeing certain resources from the infrastructure that may or may not be the physical resources, but they're abstracted. So they're seeing the resources that, re that are required to meet their user experience and service levels. So with cloud native architectures, developers can create a wide variety of, of applications and services that can be tailored to the user's preferences without having to change the underlying infrastructure. So whether that be creating their own avatars, designing their own virtual spaces, interacting with other users in a unique and personalized way. So really the infrastructure plasticity we feel is a key concept that is required for the metaverse. And it's an emerging concept at this point, uh, but we're seeing more and more work around that area. So, and basically it provides that ability to adopt and meet changes in real time. So with that cloud native computing, we're creating a highly modular, self-managing, customizable application and services with that seamless, immersive experience for the users. And this is pretty exciting too, because what that'll enable too is new innovations and new processes to, to introduce to the metaverse, new use cases for the metaverse too, incorporating across different industries as well. So, Meeting these technical requirements is a significant challenge in the, in the metaverse, but by using cloud native computing and cloud native architectures and other advanced technologies, it is possible to build a metaverse that's highly scalable, highly automated, elastic and reliable, while also providing that seamless and immersive user experience. As we continue to develop the metaverse and things evolve, technologies evolve, we, ex we expect to see a lot more innovations in this area, mostly generated by the open, uh, open communities and open source. So why open source in the metaverse? Well, let's take a look. Open source is characterized by transparency where source code is available for anyone to view and audit. In the metaverse where users will be interacting with each other and conducting transactions, transparency is essential for building trust. Users wanna know that the platform is secure, and that the data is protected. Using open source software in open communities can be assured that the code has been reviewed, vetted by a diverse group of developers. Open source can provide common methodologies to create that trust fabric and ensure that federation is supported throughout the metaverse. Digital uh, physical objects are represented in the metaverse as NFTs or non-fungible tokens. These are digital assets that are unique, identifiable, and are increasingly being used to represent these objects within the metaverse. NFTs can be used to represent anything from virtual real estate, in-game items. They can provide a way for users to truly own and control their own digital assets and identify those within the metaverse. Open source has a very big role in that space, enabling transparency, standardization, and interoperability for creating NFTs and supporting the exchange of NFTs using common smart contract capabilities. 
One of the other things that I look at is looking at data ontologies. In other words, um, ontologies are used to define uh, define the world. So to create that immersive and, and cohesive virtual world, developers are going to need to use ontologies to be able to define relationships between different objects and entities within the, within the metaverse so that you have common interoperability and common standards for transactions. An ontology is a formal spec of the concepts and relationships making up a certain domain it can be used to create a shared understanding of the virtual world amongst different users and applications, regardless of their geographic location. Open source can support the use of ontologies by providing semantic technologies to be used in, de in the definition and managing of these relationships. For example, graph databases can be used to store and query complex relationships between different objects. Machine learning can be used for e extraction and analyzing data from the metaverse and discover new relationships and, in and insights to provide additional value to the user's experience. And obviously the key here too, because we have multiple uh, players that will be involved in, in the metaverse, um, interoperability is, is obviously a key. Otherwise we have many, many virtual worlds and many, many standards. So thinking about it, the metaverse is, is always gonna be made up of different systems, different technologies, but they all need to be working together seamlessly to create that cohesive virtual world and that, that, that user experience that's to be expected. So using open source and open source APIs will make it easier for different systems to communicate and work together. We see this a lot in the Linux Foundation. This means developers can more easily integrate different systems and technologies, integrate new systems, new technologies into their application, regardless of, of who the supplier is, and create that seamless user experience. And we know that you know open source and open communities are really community-driven de development, right? So those open communities are built around the idea of developing as a community, regardless of what company you work for, what academic uh, um, institution you work for, to where the community plays that active role in shaping what the, what the platform's direction will, will look like strategically. So in the metaverse, where users are spending a significant amount of time we need, it's essential that they have a platform that reflects their needs and desires. Using an open community, users can provide feedback, suggest new features, and help shape the future of the platform. Collaborative environment promotes innovation and results in a more robust and feature-rich platform. Open source and open communities also can contribute to the sustainability and longevity of the metaverse. In that metaverse, development of the platform is ongoing. It's essential to have a community that's committed to the platform's success. Open communities promote sustainability by encouraging the community participation and contribution. Building that community that's committed to the platform's success, the metaverse can thrive and, and continue to evolve and innovate over time. So really open source is essential to the success of the metaverse. Collaboration, transparency, community-driven development, accessibility, inclusivity, sustainability, and longevity are the essential components of a successful metaverse. By using open source software, building open communities, you can create that platform that reflects the needs and desires of the users and fosters a collaborative and innovative environment. In the last slide, we talked about open software. Let's take the discussion up a level and talk a little bit about open communities. Open communities play a crucial role in accelerating information innovation for the metaverse by fostering collaboration, knowledge sharing, best practices, and experimentation amongst individuals and, and organizations working on the metaverse-related projects. Let's take a look at some, some ways that open communities can contribute to innovation and drive the next generation of metaverse. So open communities can bring people together from diverse background and skill sets who share that common interest and are driven to make the metaverse happen and make it uh, accessible to everybody. By collaboration on the projects, sharing ideas and best practices, individuals can bring their own unique perspectives and expertise to the table 
leading to greater innovative solutions. This could be done through online forums, uh, GitHub webinars, uh, conferences like the Linux Foundation Open Source uh, Summits, um, and other virtual events, virtual and in-person events. In the experiments, experimentation, open communities can ex encourage experimentation, providing access to tools, resource, and funding opportunities that enable in individuals to explore new ideas, new concepts related to the, to the metaverse. Standardization is always a key. Open communities can establish and promote standards that enable interoperability and compatibility between different metaverse projects. This can facilitate innovation by making it easier for developers to build on top of existing projects to create new ones. Metaverse is where the users, I'm sorry, in Metaverse, the users from all walks of life will be participating. So it's essential to have a platform that's accessible to everybody. Open communities foster diversity and inclusion by welcoming people from different backgrounds and perspectives, ensuring that it's a reflection of the people that use the platform. Now, this has the benefit of leading to more innovative ideas and approaches in the building the metaverse and how it evolves over time. Overall, open communities will accelerate innovation in the, in the metaverse by providing that collaborative, supportive, and inclusive environment for individuals and organizations to work together towards that common goal. So we know that the metaverse is being followed by government regula regulatory bodies, um, media. Uh, it's, it's something that's out there. Uh, generative AI is also a big uh, a thing that's out in the media, also being looked at by governments as well. Uh, but they can't be the only uh, source of, of information, exploration, and, 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 uh, and rule or uh, regulatory, uh, looking at regulatory uh, uh, environments uh, to support the metaverse and to protect the users. Um, open communities like the Linux Foundation really can play an important role, and I'd say crucial role, in providing uh, collaboration with governments and other regulatory bodies to develop the appropriate governance regulation and looking at societal impact frameworks for the metaverse. This collaboration will help ensure that the metaverse operates within legal ethical boundaries and that the interests of all people, all stakeholders and users are taken into account. One way the open communities can collaborate with governments or regulatory bodies is providing the technical expertise and industry knowledge. As experts in open source technologies and um, Open communities like the Linux Foundation can help policymakers understand the technical aspects of the metaverse, how it works, and, and what best way of actually looking at how to govern uh, the metaverse um, as it evolves. In addition, we can help also help provide, uh, sorry, help identify potential risks and challenges and propose solutions to address them. Another way that open communities can collaborate with the government is participating in policy discussions and providing input on regulations and policies related to the metaverse. This can help ensure that regulations are informed by the needs and perspectives of the industry and the users, and that they are in effect achieving the ten intended goals. Additionally, open communities can help work with governments to ensure that societal impacts in metaverses are positive. This can involve collaborating on initiatives that promote digital literacy, accessibility, inclusivity, as well as addressing issues related to privacy, security, and content moderation. Overall, open communities such as the Linux Foundation can play a crucial role in collaboration with governments, regulatory bodies, to develop appropriate governance, regulations, societal impact frameworks for the, for the metaverse. And this basically will help ensure that the metaverse operates in a fair, responsible manner, and it benefits all stakeholders. So as we've talked about, let me, let me conclude by stating you know, three, three main things. Number one, open source, open communities are essential to the success of the metaverse. Number two, collaboration, transparency, community-driven development really are essential to be able to build the metaverse and innovate and create 
and to ensure that the metaverse evolves and, and is beneficial to all. And by using open source software and building open communities, we create that platform that reflects the needs and desires of the users and fosters a collaborative and innovative environment. So thank you for uh, attending and, uh, and feel free to reach out to, to one of the three of us uh, for any questions and looking forward to, uh, to hearing from you. Thank you very much.